Hey guys, this is your Just One Guy and this is my tutorial series, Unity for Noobs. Now in the last tutorial, we showed a little bit of the online and this one I'm going to show you how to create the network and basically get your player to move around online and damage other players. Now it's important to note that this is coded specifically for my first person uh, shooter, but you can uh, use it on your own tutorial because I've commented out all the things you would need to change to adapt it to your own tutorial. Now first we got this little menu we have three options here. The host the lobby, the join the lobby, or the play offline. Now it uses the old GUI system from uh, before GUI uh, Unity changed the UI. And the reason is because it needs to create buttons dynamically and I found it easier to do it this way. Now you can change it over to the new UI system but from what I understand it was pretty complicated and I just didn't want to do it that way. It was much easier just to do it this way. And since and since it's just a menu like this, it doesn't really take up much, uh, I mean, too many draw calls, so it isn't that much uh, trouble. Now, first, we have a uh, host game, and what this does is allow us to start a lobby. Now, we have three options here, the name of the lobby, the game password, and the game info. Now, the name of the lobby is the only thing that's not optional. You need to have a name of the lobby. You can't, uh, you can't not have a name of the lobby. And the game password that is optional you can put that in if you want if you want to close the lobby or make it private or something like that and your game info is just what people are going to see when uh, they enter your game now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to name the lobby which is going to be unity for noobs next just to show that it's working we're going to put in the password we're going to put in quarry and as you can see the password automatically covers itself up so no one can see it and then we're going to put a little message uh, just uh, for people to see if they enter the lobby which is going to be shotguns only and we're going to confirm as you can see it took us to the game we are now online and what it basically did was it registered our game at Unity's master server. You can change the master server yourself, but then you would have to uh, build one. And me, myself, I've never gotten a, a master server to work on its own. But Unity, the link is in, is in my script somewhere uh, to download the scripts to uh, make a master script. I mean, a master server of your own. Now, since I've already done this before, I've already uh, so we're just gonna start that one. This can't be paused. It needs uh, it needs to run in the background for you to connect. You can't pause the game and connect to the game. Now in this one, we're going to hit join game, and as you can see, it has our lobby up here. Now, if you were to have multiple lobbies, it would still pop up, and it wants us to enter the password. Now, since we put a password in the game, we have to enter it. If you weren't to enter anything, I set it up so if you entered the wrong password, say uh, two, and you tried to go and join the lobby it just wouldn't work it is going to give you that little error there though I haven't figured out how to fix that yet but as you can see it has our info and everything now we also have a refresh button and this is for say you were connecting to someone far away like I was in the US and someone was in China it would take a minute to appear or sometimes it wouldn't appear at all something like that you could just hit refresh and it'll find all the lobbies connected to your game just in case something happens now we're going to enter the right password and it joined us to the game now if you ever want to check if you're uh, online or you're joined this will tell you right here and under the network it shows you how much data you're transferring and everything like that and all things important to the online thing as you can see we can see the other player on this one and hold up we can see the player on that and we can move around and everything we're not controlling any other players and it stops all that we can even shoot each other and kill each other now I've set it up to where the player just respawns when he dies automatically and he just respawns at that spot All right, let's see if I were to kill this player over here And I set it up so he, re he just respawns at the uh, spawn point. And that's basically it. Now let's go into how we set it up.
now we have two scripts here we have the networking script and the player online controller script now I'm gonna go over the online controller script first because it's simpler and the network script a little later because it's vastly more complicated okay now here we just have this is set up specifically for my uh, my first person controller game but you can change it to whatever you want and it basically just lets us know which, uh, which are we the player or not and what can we control if we are the player and it, since we are using a first person controller we just need the character motor and then we need a boolean to tell us if we're on or offline and then after that it just checks if we are the client and we are the server and if we're not the client or the server it's uh, or we are uh, or uh, offline is true now if we are the client or the server and our I believe our network component is ours yeah and it checks to see if the network component that is on this character is owned by this network and if it if it is it doesn't do anything but if it isn't it turns the murder control off now that allowed that allows you not to control other people's uh, characters to only control yours and not other people's otherwise you would be moving every character away because the input works on all characters no matter what now for the uh, networking script oh by the way if you wanted to change any of this for your game you would just need to take out anywhere where it said uh, right here and right here uh, yeah right here and right here and put whatever you want to control your character specifically that's it now a common practice is just uh, you would say can't uh, you would make a variable can control and then you would just say off and on based on how the character I mean was the character yours or not like if the character was yours you would put uh, character controller uh, can control on and then you put can con uh, if it's not yours it's a character controller can control off uh, but since I just set it up for the first person controller because that's what I was using next we have the actual networking script now there's a lot of stuff in here I don't really want to go over it because it's it'll be like a 20 minute tutorial and there are other videos out there that goes over it in depth plus this is commented out so you can read it and just figure out how it is but the basic stuff is you got the game name now the game name is very important I've even put it in capital letters up here this is how uh, unity tells your game because you're dialing out to uh, unity's master server and what it does is it finds your game specifically and this is how it finds your game if if you if you don't name it a unique name it's gonna find someone else's game and try to connect and it's gonna mess up because you don't have the assets and stuff like that this needs to be your unique name you have to change this and I'll put it so you can change it in the inspector or you can set it right here if you don't feel like dealing with it but it, this has to be unique no matter what mine's his name uh, I believe yeah mine's his name unity for news underscore AG and that has to be unique no matter what it's very important next we have the server data this is just the uh, server data that's going to return from unity's master server about your game and let other people connect onto it then we have the password to uh, connect to your game the lobby name and uh, this is all should be self-explanatory the lobby name that's how you name the, uh, the name of the lobby you want to play the game info now the max connections is important too because that controls how many players can connect to your game you have to set that in the inspector or you can set it right here but it's very important you have to set this if you set it to zero no one will be able to connect to your game so you want to uh, set it to how many however many people connect to your game plus one then we have the class password that's just uh, for if they enter the password and later on I'm going to set it up so uh, the player name floats over the head and this is just set uh, here now for the latest tutorials we're going to give it the players tag so each player will be tagged with a, uh, a certain name and you'll be able to see their name plate above their head and that's what that's for and then we just got the booyah to show the online menu the, uh, the size of the, the old menu uh, I meant the menu in the old GUI system whether we want to host the game, join the game, whether to show the refresh button, and the, whether to actually refresh. And I don't believe the rest of these are important. Now we have the player prefab. That's pretty important. That's how the player is instantiated. And then we have the spawn point. This controls where the spawn um, and where the, the player is. Now I've set it up to be an array, and I've only put one spawn point, but this is to expand on later because in a first person shooter, you want to randomize the spawn point and that's basically what that's for
but if you didn't want to do that you can just set the array to one and spawn at one point all the time this is just a bunch of gooey stuff to show the menu this uh what's this do uh this gets the game f i mean uh this gets the server data from Unity's master server and base the rest of this is it's commented out so you should know what it does what it do and uh you can read what it do uh, does think there's anything else that's too important over here okay now the setup is I just created this game manager and then I put the networking script on now you have to click show online menu or nothing will pop up and then I set the max connections to 7 and I put the uh, game name as unity for noobs and that's all you have to do in the setup that's it and you you must have a uh, a player that's a prefab because you need oh I almost forgot <laughs> you have to put in a spawn point I just created an empty game object and named it spawn point and that's that's it you have to put in a spawn point that's where the player was spawn at and I just made it an empty game object there's nothing unique about it and then you have to put in the player controller now at the spawn point when you first open this since it's an array it will be set to zero so you have to set this to one like this and then it will give you a spawn point and then you simply drag the spawn point over and that's it and you put the spawn point wherever you want the uh, player to spawn in the world and then you have the the thing we I mean the player we actually want to instantiate and that's the player control uh, I think I need the player a first person controller that's what I'm instantiating and I think that's it And if you like this video, please like and subscribe. And if you want to suggest a tutorial, please suggest a tutorial in the comments down below. Thank you for watching.